Hello, everyone. Um, thank you so much for joining me here today, whether it is afternoon or evening, or I guess it could be morning in some places. Uh, my name is Lindsay Wyrick, also known as the Frugal Crafter, and today we're going to craft along together and make a bunch of lovely projects that could be used for Christmas or other holidays or even birthdays because um, you can revamp these projects using different supplies if you want to for different occasions. And the supplies that I'm using today, we're going to do some Christmas projects, but they don't necessarily have to be for Christmas. So I just want to look on my computer for a second and see if I can see any comments. I'm not seeing any comments right now. So if you are watching live on the Craft Stash page, if you could just pop in and say hello and hopefully I can see that. Um, I might have to open it up on my phone to make sure that I don't miss anyone. But um, I think probably the best place to watch this is on the Craft Stash Facebook page. If you want to ask questions, um, they should be popping up. Oh, great, great, wonderful. Hello, Anne, our first commenter. That's good. Sometimes I wonder, did I push the right buttons? I'm not sure. Um, oh, good, okay, wonderful. I'm seeing lots of hellos. Oh, wow, okay. I guess I just didn't have my, didn't have my, my um, my page scrolled up enough. Wow, we have lots of people here. Great. This is wonderful. Okay, so um, again, for those of you just joining, my name is Lindsay. We're going to be crafting together today, and it's going to be a lot of fun. And because we're going to do like uh, four or five different projects, I put together a um, like a, a worksheet that you can download or view online. The link to it is in the comments underneath this video, and it basically has the um, uh, the different projects, the steps that we do, and also measurements. The measurements are in inches, so you may need to convert them if you typically work in centimeters, but um, I think it'll be pretty obvious when we get going here how to uh, do everything. And there's also a supply list of additional products that you'll probably want to have um, on hand to do these projects today. Oh, hello everyone. Okay, I'm gonna turn the camera down to the table and we're gonna see our projects and get started. We have about an hour and a half here together and I wanna make the most of it. All right, and I will look up from time to time to see if there's any questions, um, but I'm not perfect and, um, and it, I, I might miss some, so I do apologize in advance if that happens. So we're gonna make a kind of a, a poinsettia photo frame here. We're gonna make a couple boxes. We've got this tabbed box, which is nice for little gifts um, because you don't need to, um, to do anything fancy. I put ribbon on it, but it just has a little tab closure. We've got just a regular old gift bag that are really handy for those small gifts. And we're going to do a wine box here. And this just takes one sheet of cardstock, which is really nice. But because we have, um, we need to let some paint dry right off the bat, we're going to start off with our, our wreath frame here. Now, I use the MDF kit that uh, came in the Craft Along kit, which you can order if you'd like. There's still some available. And um, for this one, I use the backing and I also use the medium size frame. Uh, but here for this project, we're going to use a larger frame and we're going to start off by painting that gold. So you want to put a piece of wax paper or something out on your table to protect it so you don't get paint where you don't want it. And you're going to want to set your little frame here. Now, another idea that you could do if you have like um, uh, some like chipboard, like cereal boxes, things like that. You could cut out several layers and glue them together and make yourself a base that way. So I'm just going to start here and I'm just going to go ahead and, and squirt a little gold paint right on the frame. And then I'm just going to, I'm just going to coat it here and try to get the edges too. And it's not, our die cuts are going to cover up a lot of this. So, um, so don't worry about it being absolutely perfect. It's all, you can also cover this with paper if you want to. And I actually did that as well. Um, I did that on the backing of this bigger one here on the, the backing part, but I thought not much paper is gonna show on the, uh, the smaller frame, so I didn't bother. But if you do cover it with paper, using a sanding sponge to knock off any of the uh, rough edges will give you a nice polished look. And you could use any color of acrylic paint. I just think gold is kind of nice for the holidays because it uh, gives you a nice little bit of glitz and sparkle. 
and acrylic dries really really fast now i want to make sure i get the edges so i'm going to put a little bit you could also use a sponge brush for this and sponge it on sponge brush is easier for the edges the bristles don't like to catch the edges that well And I'm going to be probably gluing this frame on the top of a scrapbook, so I'm not going to paint the backside. But if you do plan on uh, displaying this somewhere where the back would be seen, like you're going to hang it on like a door, like um, well, like a door where you've got a window on the back, you would want to paint the backside. But let the front side dry first before you do that. All right, and then you'll want to set this aside to dry completely. And I like to use wax paper for this, and I will use the wax paper over and over quite a bit to, you know, because once that paint's dry, it's not really going to come off again. Um, and that way you can conserve your supplies and less in the landfill, which I think is good. You can also use old magazines because they've got a bit of a glossy surface, so you'll be able to pick your project up. So I'm going to set that aside. And then I'm going to grab another piece, just a piece of scratch paper, because I need to do some inking. So I am going to grab some pieces that I've already cut out. So what I did here was I took this die set. It's the um, Winter Wishes Winter Florals from Apple Blossom Design. I'm just going to hold it up a little bit closer to the camera. And I cut out the back, the large piece, out of green several times, just so I would have it. And then I cut out these smaller flowers, these smaller poinsettias, out of white and out of green. And that way I can ink some of the white ones red to make red poinsettias. I can leave some white. And then I've got some green ones because if you've ever looked at a poinsettia plant, you'll know that the um, the leaves, the, the, red, the red leaves, the red flower, quote unquote flowers, aren't really the flowers, they're actually just leaves that turn. It's the little centers that are the little flowers. And I cut those out and painted them gold. So I had a bunch of that stuff done ahead of time. I've got my little gold centers in here, along with a bunch of small little leaves, because that die set has a lot of different pieces. And uh, it's, I, I like to get all my die cutting done ahead of time just to keep it from, um, uh, you know, just to kind of save time. It's a little bit easier that way. And I just arranged everything here in my little uh my little tray so i'm going to pull out a few of these that i want to ink up in red and a few big ones so that one's already green a few big ones and a few small ones and i'm just going to grab my little sponge tool and what this is is just a foam makeup applicator one of the foam wedges and i folded it in half and glued it into a bottle cap so i make a lot of my own tools that i use in the craft room but you can use like a tim holtz foam blender or um, whatever you have and i'm just going to use some dye based red ink any brand is fine you just want kind of a nice christmas red color and i'm going to go ahead and ink these die cuts And a project like this, and one of the reasons I wanted to have one of the, uh, I wanted to have the, all the instructions typed out for you, is that these are so good to do assembly line. You know, you could sit down in front of a movie, in front of the TV, and you could do all your die cutting or all your inking, um, and kind of assembly line the project. I'm just going to take a quick peek and make sure that I didn't miss any questions. I don't think so. Everybody's just saying hello. That's good. These dies have um, some detail in them. So when you ink over them, you actually see the little, um, the little lines where there's kind of like um, uh, indication of like where the petals separate, which is kind of pretty. You can actually cut a couple at a time, so if you stacked up your paper. What I usually do is if I'm doing any die cutting where I need to cut large pieces, I cut those first, 
and then out of the scraps I'll cut the smaller things I'll cut like extra flowers extra leaves things like that to just to make the most out of my supplies sometimes you run out right you're in the middle of a project and like you've used your last sheet of paper and it's like <laughs> late at night and you need the project done for tomorrow all right and i'm just gonna wipe my fingers off there okay so we'll be doing the same technique for the wreath as we are for the cards so the cards look like this it's just a simple like one swag of the wreath and you have the um the flowers on top so you can see it's very similar to what we did for our little photo frame and i just put the cheshire cat in there because the cheshire cat was part of the paper pad and i thought it was pretty cute all right so something you can do here when you are assembling these is you can give them a little bit more dimension it just basically elevates your design to the next level level and those little lines that kind of emboss when you are die cutting these are nice indicators of where you might want to snip some of these petals apart from each other so that you can have a little bit more dimension in your crafts and then after you snip them apart you can kind of bend them with your fingers roll them back you could use a pen or pencil to to uh, shape them a little bit and it just gives you a little bit more dimension in your projects so i'm going to do that to a few of these so they'll look really snazzy especially on the card um, the wreath has a lot of dimension going on i feel like anyway but it's nice to have a few of these nice and poofy My goodness, I'm looking at the chat. People are watching all over the world. That's so exciting. It's uh, it's 2.11 here in, in Maine, USA, where I am. These little ones are really cute. They're kind of like a mirror of what the bigger ones are there. Uh, the little lines seem to go the opposite way. Just don't cut so far that you cut through. I mean, like you don't want to cut the petals off. Now for glue, any white glue, any PVA glue will work just fine. I'm going to use zip dry glue. I like it because if I make a mistake, I can roll off the excess. But if I run out of that, then I can, I'll just use some just regular school, white, white school glue will be just fine. Okay, I think that's good. And I'm going to get the acrylic round back. We'll see if that's dry. Uh, it's still a little wet. So um, why don't we work on make one of those cards while we're waiting for the, the uh, other part to dry. I'll set that aside. So both of the cards are made the same way. And we're going to start off with a 5 inch by 7 inch card base. That's um, A7, I believe. So let's put it on my grid there for reference. And I'm going to cut a panel out of my decorative paper that is uh, four and a half by six and a half. So I have a nice um, quarter inch border all the way around. The nice thing about working with a paper pad is that you all your all your papers are going to match. They're all going to coordinate beautifully. So you don't have to worry about choosing something that doesn't go. And I like a damask. This damask is really pretty. So four and a half inches by six and a half inches will give us a nice border. And I want to ink the edges just to give it a little bit of character. And I'm going to use kind of a, a caramel color for that. I'm going to grab my paper back. The thing with dye ink, if you inked on like your craft mat, 
Uh, you might not see the ink because dye ink's transparent, especially on a dark craft mat like that. But then when you go to do another project and you set your paper down, it's going to pick up that ink because that ink will not dry on a non-porous surface. So it really is nice to use scrap paper for inking. And you can even use like um, sheets from an old phone book or old catalog. They are going to work just fine for that. And um, especially uh, it'll keep it out of the landfill, which is really nice. Now I need some adhesive. Any double-sided tape will work. I've been using score tape because we're going to do boxes and the score tape is a lot stronger. I'm just going to put a little bit on the back here because it doesn't need a lot. This tape is super strong. But any strong double-sided tape that you like will be fine. Uh, Tina is wondering what paper trimmer that is. This is a Cutter Bee by EK Success. Um, I think they still make them, but I think that they might be kind of a grayish teal color now instead of the bright green. But I'll show you. Uh, the, I think the cut, see my little trimmer there? I think that's the color they come now. And I do believe you can still get them. I have had this thing for probably like 18 years and I get really nice cuts with it. This is the one I keep in my scrapbook travel bag because it fits right in one of the pockets really well. Um, usually I'll use my big guillotine style cutter, but it just takes up too much space for when I'm like doing a tutorial. But I've been really happy with that one. All right, so let's look at our beautiful tray of die cuts. We're going to want a, um, we're going to want one big one. That will work just fine. My thing wants to open up on me. I think I want to like tack it down with a little piece of tape because it wants to pop open on me. Now, if you want to glitter your die cuts, you can. I would recommend you glitter it, uh, probably glitter it before you before you glue it down. And the glitter that I'm really liking right now for this is, um, it's called Luna Paste. And it looks like this. And it's just a very like sheer, uh, it almost feels... It almost feels like kind of spongy and fluffy. It's just really, really light and it dries really, really quickly. And so what you can do, oops, grab my scrap inking paper again. All you have to do with this is just gently glide it over whatever you want to shimmer. You could also use like a Winka Stella pen or you could use, um, Oh, let's see what else would work really well. I mean, you could use, you could put adhesive and then like uh, shape glitter on it. This stuff doesn't seem to come off like, um, like loose glitter does. So I know a lot of people are annoyed by like glitter coming off their cards. Like recipients are annoyed by that. So I don't want to give anybody an annoying <laughs> Christmas card. So I'm going to just put, use this stuff. Of course, that said, I think I totally overdid it on the frame and I, I was kind of like regretting glittering the, uh, the little frame so I'm not sure if I'm going to do it on the one we're doing today because once you put the glitter on it's on it's not coming off so you've got to kind of commit but I think it's pretty on a card because it catches the light and looks really nice and it like dries in seconds so if we were using glue and a shaky glitter or if we were using a stickles it would take a while and I can never seem to not disturb my stickles after I glitter something with it Oh, and then we're going to put some glue on the back. There, I think I need to start this one. I like these single, well, not single serving, but they're smaller because I have a hard time. I usually um, end up clogging my glue bottles before I've used up my glue. So the smaller applicators, it t I tend not to, uh, not to waste so much. You want to get a little bit little tiny touches of glue on those tendrils because this dye one thing I'll tell you about it is that there's so many little vines that come off the focal image that they can be a little fragile if you don't get them stuck down well so just kind of just a little dot here and there you don't need to put a ton of glue down but you do need to get little dots of glue on the edges and when you're doing your frame you're gonna to want to try to anchor the um the tendrils as much as you can it won't be per you won't be able to get every little one down because some are going to hang over which is part of the beauty of it but um 
uh, but they can be kind of fragile. It's perfect on a card because everything gets anchored down really well. And then what I usually do is I'll use like the, the heel of my hand to press down because I never have ink on that part of my hand. All right. Oh, you know what? I just realized something. And hopefully I can uh, go back. And, well, you know, it doesn't really matter. Okay, so if you're going to do... <laughs> I'm not going to take this card apart, but what I should have done actually was left this piece loose because we're going to use brads and um, and you don't want to... Well, it doesn't really matter. I'm going to have to poke through all the layers of my card, which is a little difficult to get through both of those layers. Then you see the, the backs of the brads inside the cards. So um, if I had a time machine, I'd go back a minute and I would not glue this down yet. But uh, say la vie. <laughs> it is what it is, right? <laughs> Okay, now we're going to figure out what we want to do for our little flowers. I like to mix them up. I think white point studies are really pretty, so I like doing kind of a mix, having like having some red and maybe like one white. And I think that's just really kind of classic and pretty. And instead of using the center die cuts that come with the kit, I'm actually going to use brads. Yellow brads work. I think I'm going to use red and yellow. And I ran out of red brads, so what I did was I actually um, took nail polish and I painted some pink brads because I was totally out of um, out of red ones. I'm only going to use a red one on the yellow, on the white poinsettia though. So I need three yellows and one red. And I think we should add a little bit of layering. So you know those um, those poinsettias we just did and we cut. We can put one of those here. We can put one here of the bigger ones. I like the ink to, rather than just going with a with a, a flat red. I feel I feel like the inking just gives you a little more dimension and looks really really nice. If you want, you could glitter on the flowers as well. But I think having a little bit of um, backgrounds inked. The first layer is glittered, and this is just kind of plain and inked. I think that looks really nice, just kind of simple like that. So now we're going to need something to poke a hole there. And I can see my pokey tools across the room. Let's see if I can do this with scissors. I think there, that'll look good. Because I have to go through all these layers. I think scissors are probably the best option. So as a reminder, you would be doing this before you put it on the card base. Whoa, that doesn't want to poke through that. Maybe if I shift it over a little bit. There we go. Nail polish is such a good way to alter your embellishment colors because you get that beautiful enamel look. It's fast drying and, um, and that way you don't have all these weird oddball color leftovers like you might from different, different, uh, kits oh somebody commented that the um the cutter that i have has different blades that you can get yeah there's decal and scallop and wave um i have the decal one because i primarily use that cutter when i'm scrapbooking like on on crops and stuff and i like to use the decal i like the old-fashioned photo look of a decal edge all right Let's put our brad in here Uh, Tina says, couldn't you just put the hole through the flowers and not through the card? I guess I could, yeah, I could put it through the flowers and then just glue the bottom flower on. Um, it might take away some of the dimension because, uh, because that bottom flower would have to be glued pretty strongly to the, to the back of the card. But yeah, that's definitely an idea. So what I would do here in this case is I would just get like a, I would just line the envelope, like get a thinner piece of paper and fold it and adhere it on this side and leave it loose there and write my message on that side. But um, you can also stamp a Merry Christmas. You could use one of the um, one of the many sayings that is in the paper pack that we have. There's different birthday sayings and uh, and things like that. You could put a thank you in there. You could you could really do whatever you want on this card and. Uh, I think it's really pretty. It's got a little bit of subtle texture, subtle glitter, oh, just kind of a fun card. So let's see if our wreath background is dry-ish. Yeah, it's dry enough. 
And then we're going to pretty much do a very similar thing, except we're going to build our wreath by going around with some of our background. And I love the contrast of the dark green and the bright gold. I think that looks really nice. And don't be afraid to trim off pieces if you need to. I think sometimes people think they have to use a die just the way it comes, but if you cut your, if you're willing to cut your die, cut your uh, die cuts, you can get a lot more versatility out of them. So it's going to take about three die cuts to get around this, this, uh, this die here. I'm going to cut these off and I think I might add just like another flower. This up as a sign in case I need them. And I might cut some of the really long ones that dangle off. But then again, I'm going to glue this down to the front of a scrapbook so that I can have some tendrils because I can anchor it to I can anchor it to the back of the project. I might just cut uh I think I might just cut a couple flowers right off of this. That will, it's already got the nice curve to it and that will work pretty well. Every year I make my mom and dad a uh, scrapbook calendar. So I go, I print out the uh, photos, the family photos of my kids um, from the year and then I do a big uh, calendar, calendar scrapbook. I print off like a plain calendar on cardstock and bind it together with my um, with my comb binding system and then I work on, I just um, I just kind of put pattern paper and, and scrapbook it all together and it's it's a requested gift. My mother wants one every year so it's so I know it's a good one. So as an idea for you guys if you've got kids um, grandparents love gifts like that and then and then they they basically get a scrapbook at the at the end of the year because I do it on nice thick cardstock so at the end of the year that calendar is actually a scrapbook and if they've written things down on the different days then they've actually got kind of like a scrapbook slash journal all done at the end of the year I'm just gonna take a quick look to see if anybody has any questions that I missed and I think we are good and don't forget, if I'm going fast, there is a printout, a printable for you that has all the directions. When I'm looking at dies and things like that, I might want to add to my stash. I try to find stuff that you could use year round. Um, this does have definitely a poinsettia shape to it, but I think you could use these flowers for different occasions and different colors. If you did it in more tropical tones, you could probably make um, uh, like maybe a hibiscus or something like that in the, um, you know, for summer cards. Or you could do this with a dye that is more like, uh, has more summery flowers on it. So, you know, look at your stash, see what you have, see what will work. Overlapping is nice because it gives you a fullness. Always see how it looks before you glue it down. At this point, if you want to glitter the green, you, you can do it. Um, I'm not going to glitter this one because I glittered this one. That way I can show you uh, side by side how they look and that way you can decide whether you want to do that or not. And I'm just going to look around and see if there's anything I want to trim off the edge. This is hanging over quite a bit. So I think I will trim that. I'll save it though in case like when I glue this to my the scrapbook calendar when I'm ready to do that in the future, I can always add it to it. That one I had torn it. I'm not a very proficient die cutter and I get impatient sometimes and uh, sometimes I pull the die out of the die cutter a little, or pull the paper out of the die a little bit too aggressively, and I end up 
uh, ripping little little bits. So um, I feel like it's a little like it might be need something there, but I can always add something on later. And so then now we're just going to use various various flowers, various leaves. I'm going to try to just space around what I've already got cut out. I pre-die cut everything because that can take quite a bit of time when you are doing a video. So if you're trying to craft along and it's taking you a while to get things die cut, please don't be, um, don't be frustrated. Give yourself some patience. You can always hang out and visit with your friends in the chat. I like to stack a couple of those up, especially if I have them left over. Let's stack those two together. Oh, you know what? Maybe I'll just put that, put an extra flower, the extra leaf there that will fill that area out just a little bit more. I also cut some of the, uh, the little wreath parts out of that white so I would have some in between sizes of the flowers. Just gives you a little bit more versatility. And bend and crumple, get some nice, nice texture going. it's getting a little too um it's looking more wrinkly than smooth when you do this uh, all you have to do is take like a, a pencil or anything round the end of a paintbrush and roll those leaves around that it'll just give you a little bit smoother of a look but keep in mind it does not have to be perfect because um nobody's going to examine you know they're looking at everything as a whole they're not looking at just one little bit they're not looking at like oh that flower is a little off you know, off or that color is not exactly right. Nobody's doing that. So do you guys all have your uh, holiday shopping done? I placed an order, but we had bad weather and, <laughs> and like all of my, all of my orders have been delayed. So I'm hoping everything gets here by Christmas. All right, once you're happy with where everything is and how everything is um, is arranged, you can go ahead and you can start gluing stuff down. A hot glue would work really well for this because the on this stage because the flowers are bigger and you've got you've got um, you got more space to work. You don't want to get a hot glue on tiny little things because it's messy and you could burn yourself. But when you've got larger stuff, especially if you bent the petals, um, hot glue can help because it marries pieces together even if they're not perfectly like lined up and they're not perfectly touching because it's kind of a thick glue so keep that in mind and um, it's very inexpensive oh oh Lou is here hi thank you she likes the wreath so far If you're watching on the craft world page I won't be able to see your comments so um, hop on over to the the uh, craft the craft stash website the craft stash fa Facebook page rather and um, then if you comment there I'll see it <laughs> oh 
Oh boy, April says she's been too busy making Christmas cards to even think about presents yet. Oh, I hear you. I always have the best intentions too. You know, I've got like so many plans and so many projects that I want to do. And then, <laughs> and then that's like, oh, I'm tired. <laughs> I think that would look pretty there. Think about light and balance as you go around your wreath so that you don't have one side really, really dark and the other side really, really light. Those are pretty. I love, I like the really subtle tones like, um, like it's not perfectly white it's like maybe cut out of a paper that's got a little bit of a pattern to it or a little bit of marbling to it when i have these really intricate dyes they have like the tendrils and stuff i find using um some wax paper is really handy for letting them release some people swear by using a plastic bag for that but i've never had really good luck with that um and I've also heard used dryer sheets can help because they deposit a little bit of like anti-static goodness to your dyes. But I haven't tried that either. I, I keep meaning to save the dryer sheets to try for, try that with. But good old wax papers always worked fine for me. Or I should say work the best. I have a very old die cutter, so it uh, needs all the help it can get. This would be pretty done in a smaller size too. Um, the uh, MDF frame kit comes with a smaller circle as well that would be perfect for an ornament. Or if you had a set of nesting circle dies, um, you could do like find some um, like cereal boxes and you know cut some make some circle frames, make a few and glue them together and you could create something very similar and an ornament size that would be really pretty. I feel like I want another just little green one there. This will do. Or actually maybe a white one. You can get so fiddly with this. Oh, actually, maybe a red one. That's pretty. Hate to waste the ones I've taken the time to ink. So remember, if you want to glitter, you can. So do your green before you put the flowers on and then once you get the flowers on then you can just kind of gently go around with glitter. Now for the centers, I thought these were really pretty with a little bit of gold paint. And I'm just going to set them out here. That one I didn't paint yet. So that way I can just kind of dab in the center and go around. I didn't paint that one either. But metallic gold. It's cheap and it gives you a beautiful festive result. So some of these stamens are um, like front facing and some are kind of side facing. I think one per flower is good, but if you want to stack them up, go for it. All right. I'm going to wipe the tip of this glue off. Oh, a magnetic shim works well. Um, I have a magnetic plate that I use for um, for some of the dyes, and I have one of those one of those um, precision plates, which can help with really intricate dyes. I have a metal shim. I need to try the magnetic one. I'm going to kind of alternate. I think use like a a sideways stamen on one and the front on one. And the nice thing about this is you could put the glue kind of in a little hole from the die cut. So it should be able to grab without like squirting too much out of the place uh, outside of where you want it. But if you do get the little, you know, snail trails of glue um, creeping out around the edges, you can rub them off with the with the um, with your fingers if you're using the zip dry glue. There's probably other glues that do that too. If anyone has any glue recommendations they want to share in the chat, go right ahead. I'm definitely not a uh, I'm not on the cutting edge of what what glues are are out. If I find one that works, I pretty much stick with it.
and it's sticking to my finger. Oh shoot. I think I've got glue in my finger. It wants to stick to my hand and not the project. All right, let me get one more. If you get, if you use hot glue for anything and you get the hot glue strings, you can blast it with a heat tool and it will take them away. I need one more gold center. Do I have one? I might just have to use a plain one. Ooh. Let's use a white one and it will be, you know, that looks, doesn't that really stand out when you have one that's not gold? Now, what do you think, guys? Can I paint this and not get paint where I don't want it? I think it's highly unlikely, but I'm going to give it a try anyway. Oh, cross-cut magnetic shim sheath. I will look into that because I have, I have a hard time with intricate intricate dies. All right, so I think the key here for putting that wet uh, die cut down will be not letting it move. All right, there we go. Okay, so here is our wreath done. Let me move this out of the way so you can see it a little bit better against the black. Here is our completed wreath. And this is our glittery wreath. So let's kind of tip it around so you can see how it catches the light. So it's completely up to you which look you like better. Um, and I think you should always make your projects reflect your personality and they shouldn't be cookie cutters of anybody else's. So definitely do what you like the look of best. So I'm gonna set this aside so it can completely dry. And that project is done. Now, if you wanted it like this, so the differences for this is I, I put backing paper on the large circle. I just did the edges with the gold paint. And then we did our wreath just like we did before, except I added glitter. But before I glued it down, I put a photo in there. Um, or I put a picture in there. You could obviously put a family photo in there and it'd make a really pretty gift. But um, other than that, the steps are the same. It just depends on what you like. So do what you like. Okay, so I'm gonna push some of this out of the way and we're gonna move on to our gift bags. I'm actually making really good time. I'm gonna just sweep this off into my tray so I can have them left the leftovers for another project. And what you're going to want for this is either a scoring board, like a score pal or whatever brand scoring board you have. I have a score pal or a um, like a mat like this, a ruler and like a bone folder or butter knife or something to help you get a really nice, good score. And I've got my scoring board here. And we're going to make three different bags. So there you're going to you're going to notice similarities as we do these. So I think. Um, this is one of those neat projects that really kind of teaches you how to make a bag and then you can um, you can adapt it to a different size to make whatever size bag you want. If you've got bigger cardstock or bigger poster board, you can make a bigger bigger project. And like I said, the measurements and the the paper sizes are all on the um, are all on that link that I put in the comments box, okay? So the tall wine box, we're gonna do that first. And I'll show you what that looks like again. And this fits a, a regular size bottle. I just kind of wrapped it with some wrapped it with some paper here so that you can see the top of it because it is a little shorter than the than the height of a wine bottle. So that way you can kind of keep it a surprise. And it is a pretty tight fit, so. Um, you know, this is really probably the biggest square type of box you'll be able to make with one sheet of cardstock. So there's that. Okay, so we've got our 12 inch by 12 inch piece of powder paper on our score pal. Um, if anybody knows the conversion to centimeters and wants to um, pop that in a chat, that would be great. Um, but I'm sure, I'm sure people can figure it out. Uh, we're going to start off by scoring at two and seven eighths and 
one little notch before three. So basically it's just going to be a little bit smaller than, than a three by three. Then we're going to score at five and three quarters. And you score on, if you're using a score pal or something that's got a divot that you're pressing the paper down into, you want to score on the right side of your paper if at all possible, because it will keep it from cracking. Uh, then we're going to score at eight and five eighths. Really hoping I don't mess the math up while I'm doing this live. And then we're going to score at 11 and a half, and that's going to give us a half inch tab to be able to glue our box together. Now we're going to turn our box and we're going to score two inches from two inches along uh, from the from one of your edges. It doesn't really matter what edge, but two inches from the bottom. This is going to make our bottom flat. All right. So I'm not sure if the light will, I'm going to flip it over and maybe the light will catch it and you can see, eh, can't really see where our lines are, but we've got a line here, 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 and there. So what you're going to do here on this area where we've got the, the half inch score, the score at 11 and a half inches, we're going to cut out that bottom little rectangle kind of at an angle. And then we're going to look at the score line, the next score line, and we're just going to kind of cut out a notch. So basically just cutting that score line out to make our bottom flaps. And really, you can alter those um, those score lines to make whatever size box you want. Just make sure that your um, that the sides equal each other. So, like your your first and third side needs to equal each other. Hope that makes sense. So now we're going to fold on our score lines. I love this because, like, if you go to buy a wine box or a wine bag, I mean. Even if you get it at the dollar store, that's a dollar, but I mean, a lot of times your pattern paper, your pattern paper cardstock works out to be much less than that. And usually wine bags are much more than that, so. Fold up the bottom flaps. All right, now we're gonna get our adhesive out again. You want a strong adhesive for this, especially for the wine box because it's gonna hold a bottle of wine and you don't want to be carrying that by the ribbons and have it rip or have it fall, have the bottom fall out. So the first piece of score tape I'm going to put down is going to be along the tab. You want to keep the backing, um, you want to keep the backing attached until you're ready to press the box together. Otherwise, it's if you get that tape pressed to something before it's ready, it's just gonna um, it's gonna stick. Okay. So now that we've you know you want to. Make sure it's going to work, it's going to hold, it's going to meet up well, and it's not going to be all wonky. So then you peel your backing off and just press it. Just try to, try to, uh, try me not to put it on crooked because you're not going to get another chance. Hot glue also works well for box assembly, but again, if you're just dealing with a small tab, you got to be real careful you don't burn yourself. Don't burn your hands off. All right. So now we get the bottom, and um, what I like to do is I do opposite sides and then opposite sides. And I kind of just want the adhesive close to the edge, so what I'll do is I'll put it on the underside of the one going on top, and then I'll just press it. And this is this pattern is handy because you can line up the uh, the pattern. And then I'll stick my hand right in there and give it a good press. So I've got my my um, my fingers. I'm pressing against the seam. And then I'll look at this and say, okay, which side looks better? What 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 tab looks better? And that will be the tab I put on the outside. All right. So I'll put my piece of right along here. 
That way you won't have, uh, the reason I don't want to put my adhesive further in, like in the middle, is because that's going to keep any loose flaps from like getting caught on things and um, snagging and looking, you know, getting all kind of shop worn or anything. All right, now what we're going to do is add our ribbon closure or our ribbon, our little ribbon handles. And any punch is going to be fine. You don't have to have a crocodile. I do like this punch because it um it'll go through a lot of materials it'll go through chipboard it'll go through metal like it'll go through a soup can basically it's just really really nice and i'm gonna go probably like half an well not even half inch but a quarter inch from the side you can have them in closer if you want to same time because that way I know I'll get two that are the same length and I'm gonna grab my, my fabric scissors because I will struggle with my paper scissors trying to cut ribbon so I'm gonna cut them longer than what I want the handles to be and I'll show you why in a second just a little bit I'd say this is about 12 inches going to do is feed them through the front side and then I'm going to do an overhand knot to tie the ends together and that way I uh, have a nice strong a nice strong knot on the inside and so that's what it looks like on the inside you can trim that down a little bit and we'll do the same for the other one and then our sides will match because we started off with the same size ribbon and we're tying them together the same way. And I try to keep the tails the same size just so it will make my the length be the same size. And there, you don't have to worry about, that's why I don't tie the ends and the knots because they might pull through the holes. That'll just give us a nice strong um, handle that shouldn't pull through. And then our wine bottle will, will just fit. Right in there. And you can add a tag to decorate it. And I think it's just a really classy way to present a uh, present for a housewarming or a Christmas gift, and it fits perfectly. It's the more slender wine bottles, though, so like if it's something like a fatter wine bottle, it's not going to fit with this pattern. Um, you would need poster board probably, or by that you might just like probably wouldn't use a gift bag. It might be a, it might be a little too difficult to to fit something to that. But this works really well for a slim wine bottle because it's really sleek and doesn't take up a lot of space. All right. The next one we're going to do is the um, Alice gift bag. Oh, here's my example. My goodness, I'm losing everything. Right here. We're going to do this one next. Uh, to Just to finish off the other bag, you can just make a little tag to decorate it. I'll show you how to do the paper toile here on this bag. Um, but I think this will probably be the only one we decorate. And we're again going to start with a piece of cardstock. This cardstock is cut to seven inches by 12 inches and when you cut your paper you want to make sure that um, if you, you want it to be cut like this so your hearts are right side up when you're looking at it this way okay you don't want it to have the hearts right side up going a long way or they're going to be sideways on your box and um, you, if you had one of those paper bag makers from like We Are Memory Keepers, you could do that with this, you could do pretty much the same bag, um, but you don't need one. It's, um, this was gonna work just as well. So we're gonna score at two inches. So this is gonna be, let's say this is side A, two inches, it's, our, it's one of the edges, the skinny sides. Then we're going to score at five and three quarters. That's our making our wider side, so side B. Then we're gonna score two inches from there 
or at uh, I'm second guessing my I'm second guessing my measurements. I'm second guessing. Wait a minute. I've got to look at this. I'm second guessing what I wrote down now. To five and three quarters. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna, I must have missed, oh, because I just jotted down, jotted down those notes. Okay, so, say two, five and three quarters, so I need two inches from there, so that would be seven and three quarters. So, you basically, you need to make sure that, you know, your first side matches your third side, and your second side matches your fourth side. And then, um, eleven and a half for this last one, I believe. I'm gonna I'm gonna write that down. I'm gonna double check my um, my pattern that I that I checked up and make sure that I didn't make a mistake there. I, I don't know if I made a mistake on I, where I typed it because I um, I couldn't print out that first page. I was out of ink. Uh, so two inches, um, five and three quarters, seven and three quarters, and eleven and a half are the measurements. And I will double check my um, my notes when we're done here so nobody gets the wrong inches on uh, the wrong thing so two five and three quarters seven and three quarters eleven and a half all right i just want to make sure i don't mess anybody else up okay and then we're going to score what we're going to do i'm going to measure my the bottom of mine here because now i don't Totally don't trust my um, my notes. Inch and inch and a half from the edge. There we go. And if we're gonna do the same thing here. We are going to snip off this little bottom underneath the tab, and then we are just going to snip right around each of the scoring lines at the bottom. So we did that that like score near the bottom so that we could make our bottom of our bag. <laughs> Someone says that's a big furl of ribbon. Yeah, it is. I used to do um, I used to do work for a ribbon company and so I'm telling you I had a lifetime supply of ribbon. <laughs> when I was done. I had to come up with a lot of ideas on how to use ribbon on projects. All right, so same, this is probably looking real familiar. It's the same, the same thing we did before. I'm just going to go ahead and tape everything together. I like to do the side tab first. Try to line it up before you let the before you uh, press anything really well. You can put your hand in the box and kind of press against your hand to get that nice bond. It bonds with pressure. And then on the bottom flaps, all we really need to do is put. Um, I mean, you could put adhesive on those two little ones. You really don't need to. This is, you wouldn't be putting something as heavy as a wine bottle in a small bag like this, so you don't have to worry about it too much. These are really nice for um, if you're giving a gift card or a gift certificate to a restaurant, something like that, um, or a small, um, like a soap, like if you make handmade soaps, this is the perfect size for that. And again, we are going to do our uh, ribbon handles the same way. I think I'll bring mine in a little bit further this time. You got to be careful though with these punches that when you're putting that in the box to cut to uh, to crimp that you're not. It's see, it's really easy to go like this, and then you'd make a hole on both sides, but they'd be different sizes. Do you see how that's? Um, you know, if you're not careful, so you got to kind of put it in at an angle and then turn it so you don't uh, accidentally 
Oh gosh, friends, do you see what I did there? When you score the bottom of your box, make sure that <laughs> it's the bottom of your box has got the heart bottoms pointing at it because I just made my heart upside down. Well, it wouldn't be a frugal crafter video if there wasn't some some mistake. But that's a teachable moment because you won't make that mistake because you just saw me do it. So I've got uh, I've got the hearts upside down on my. Maybe I could draw little tails on them. They could be spades. It is Alice in Wonderland after all. Um, <laughs> so what do you do that when you score that one and a half inches from the edge? Just make sure you're doing that at the bottom uh, that it's going to be that the hearts are pointing at the where you score the inch and a half edge. Does that make sense? Oh my. We're live, friends. There's no editing. There's no editing. <laughs> oh, I'm glad we're all friends here. I don't think any of my friends would mind a upside down heart gift box. I'll say it's the latest. Say it's the latest trend. That's the joy of handmade. <laughs> you are right. It is. It is. I had um, I had stopped at getting wrapping paper, and I was just using plain like brown butcher paper or craft paper to do my wrapping. And uh, this year, I'm like, no, I'm, I need some festive wrapping paper this year. So I I uh, got some nice festive wrapping paper. I was getting real tired of everything being like brown and vintage and and natural looking i needed some some bright colors and i love that i can make these bags out of whatever crazy scrapbook paper that i have they're so handy nice cardstock white paper works best for this unless you're just doing a gift uh gift certificate gift bag i like it because they're sturdy enough to be reused now for decorating this you can get really creative um and i just decided to go with some of the little cutouts that were in the alice in wonderland kit there the alice in teal kit and there is a kind of a base layer here, and then you've got these other elements, and these are for doing um, kind of like building up and doing paper twall with. I'm gonna turn them around so the right side up for you. That makes more sense. I'm gonna set that aside. Okay, so we've got the skirt, we've got Alice, we've got the hat, and then we've got the um, the entire person here. So when I cut out the Alice, I didn't cut out her back arm or her wand because when I stack it up that we want to be to look further away because if she's like kind of side facing us that would be the furthest away part of her and then this would be a little bit closer with her like her shoulder and her head and her hair and her legs then the skirt full skirt would be a little bit further ahead and so would the crown so we're going to use foam tape to build this up and sometimes you've got just the right size of foam foam tape but other times you need to cut them and what I'm gonna do is go right ahead and I'm gonna cut some of these little foam rectangles in half. So if you have smaller foam tape, that's fine. Um, obviously use it, but um, sometimes your tape's kind of big, so you wanna cut it, but cut it when you've got the backing on it and it should keep the sticky stuff off of your scissors. I'm so glad everybody's so understanding about the upside down, <laughs> the upside down hearts. But you know, Alice in Wonderland, I guess that would actually fit with the theme because that's all really upside down and crazy anyway. So I'm going to say it was an artistic decision using my artistic license. I do like to be pretty, um, uh, pretty generous with the foam squares in case as well on a gift bag I guess it would probably doesn't matter that much but if you're doing a card it'll keep it from getting crushed if you go a little heavy on the on the foam tape and then the legs are really skinny I do want to have some dimension there so I'm going to cut one of these um, foam squares a long way and hopefully that'll be Give me enough not to show too badly. You could go in and touch it up with a really pale blue marker or something if you wanted to, if it bothered you. I don't think it would bother me. All right, so then our first layer is going to go down. Yes, Simone, a small Yankee candle would be perfect in there. I love Yankee candles. There is uh, one called a Silver Birches. It is so good. It's so, it smells so good. 
my sister gets me um, usually two of the big silver birches candles for Christmas every year. So I'm kind of hard. She says I'm hard to buy for. <laughs> but I'm like, well, I love those candles, so that's perfect. And they last so long. The scent is so nice. It's strong though. I can't burn both of them at once because they're so they're so strong. And so next we're going to do the skirt. So when you have, um, you don't, if you have like, say, a stamp, and you're going to stamp out, like if you had a stamp of Alice, and you were going to stamp her a couple times and do this, just keep in mind what, what would be further away. And you don't want to just stack up every single thing on top of each other. You want to selectively line up the things that would actually be closer to you in real life to get that um, three-dimensional effect and have it be realistic. Yes, I am a normal crafter, just like just like everybody. I make mistakes, probably more than some. <laughs> I hate it when I make a mistake on my last piece of paper or my last of something when it's like, oh shoot, and then you gotta you gotta totally like uh, try to rescue it. So there's her skirt, and we'll do the hat. I'm gonna have to use a smaller lens for the hat, I think. And one of the little ones I cut in half for the pom pom area. I guess it's not a pom pom, but you know what I mean. It's handmade, not Hallmark. I like that. And again, you could do touches of gold paint on this. I think that would look really pretty if you had your like a fine paintbrush. Well, let's do it. Let's stick this on the bag and then let's add some gold accents and see how it looks. I think that would be really pretty. Um, so I'm going to use score tape on the bottom of this or on the back of this. Oftentimes I'll use my ATG gun, but if we had something like this, it would be very difficult to do that because we would sm we would smush our image. So using score tape in this instance is really, really handy. Oh, someone has a tippy. Uh, Anne says she gets three of a paper, so she has a spare one for mats. That's a good idea. I used to always buy my, um, if I was like buying scrap of paper or pattern paper, I'd buy two, I'd, two or three, because I'd want to, I might want to do a double page layout and use it for the background. And, uh, but quite honestly, a lot of times I was buying, uh, I would buy like one to use and one to keep because it was so pretty. And I know if I only had one, I wouldn't be able to use it because I would be afraid of wasting it. I'm not so bad that about that now. It's, uh, I'm definitely more of a, of a use it or lose it girl because I've seen too many things go out of style in the uh, in like papers and things like that and there's always new cute paper coming out so I you know I don't worry about about saving something for an absolute you know perfect project anymore I actually usually go for the first thing that will work so we're gonna line that up you might overlap the handles a little bit but that shouldn't be too big of a problem Give it a good, put your hand inside the bag to give it a good uh, push to secure. And let's do a little bit of paint on there. I think that would be really cute. So grab my scrap. You won't need much paint. In fact, you could probably just use a brush with it on the, um, on the uh, lid of your paint to do that as well. I'm going to grab a fine brush. And you can give just a little, little bit of touches of gold. Try not to paint over the over the black lines because it might uh, it might gold paint does tend to have a little bit of a sheerness to it, but just try to concentrate the uh, the paint to where there's no there's no. Um, there's no lines. Gold works so well with this with this pattern paper because it's got gold foiling on it. It's kind of monochrome with the teal and the gold foiling. It's so pretty, so elegant. It's it'd be very difficult to um, to make it clash. And this is going to be really subtle because it's not a super metallic, but I think it will give it a nice touch. I squirted that way more paint than I needed. Yeah, just use it from the, the tube. I think you'd be 
better off, but it gives it a little bit of a, I don't know, maybe if I hold it up closer to the camera, you can see a little bit of a glint of shine there. It's pretty subtle, but it's pretty. Kind of more pearly than metallic. Um, and I'll grab a marker to show you how I would, um, how I would do the, uh, if I want to cover the foam dots. I'm going to use an alcohol marker because I want to make sure it's not going to, um, it's not going to show. Let's see, is that close? This is pretty close. I want to make sure that it's not going to bleed off. I don't know if you can see that. This is, might even be a little darker than I need to be, but I can just kind of go in there. Just very carefully. If I see some that are really obvious, just going to hit the edges with the marker. It's actually pretty hard to see, so I don't think you need to do it, but that's a way you can do it. If you have a nice long brush tip, it works well because it can, it can kind of reach in there. Maybe I'll use a lighter one around the tights. And that way, this real light one, if I do hit the back of the box, if I hit the, the, the base of the box, it's not going to really show up. You can just kind of soften, soften things down if you want to. And then you can add a sentiment, you could add a to or from tag, whatever you like. Put some tissue paper in there. I think it's really pretty and it's really elegant and it's sturdy enough to be reused a few times. So it's not like you're doing all that work just for just for one time use. All right, the last project I have today is a tab fold box. So it is a little bit more complex um, just because instead of just having the bottom of the box, we also have the top of the box. So I'm going to move this stuff out of the way. I'm just going to brush this off over my trash can. We're making pretty good time. 311. We've got 20 minutes to do our box. All right, for a piece of paper that is six by twelve. It's got some script on it. The script is not, luckily, it's not so <laughs> it's not so directional that we have to worry about up and down, but you definitely want to cut your paper if it's script, if it's this paper, so that the um, the script is going along with the length of the paper, the long, the long way of the paper. And we are going to score this at two inches, five and three quarter. You guys, let, I need to go in and I need to amend my measurements on these last two boxes because I can tell I did the same thing on this one. Um, so we're going to do two inches, five and three quarter, seven and three quarter, and 11 and a half. So I apologize. I need to fix those two measurements on the worksheet. So if you have the printed that worksheet off already, please make a note of that. If, if you've already printed it out, I have an error. I, it says um, nine and a half and it should say seven and three quarters. So um, I just want to make sure that, that I've got that. So then we're going to score an inch and a half from the top and the bottom because we need to make a bottom and top to our box. All right, and we're going to do the same thing. You just want to be really neat when you cut out your tab. So this is the bottom. I'm looking at my um, the script, and this looks like it's right side up this way. So I'm going to cut the bottom flaps. So that, that's the same as what we've done so far. So nothing different so far in this box compared to the other one. Okay, and on the top, we are going to cut out that first little notch, that little uh, over the, the tab that closes the whole box together. And then we are going to very, try to try to be even all the way around, just kind of cut a little bit of a taper on either side of the score line. Just neatness counts on the top here. Just try to make them all pretty much match. Oop. 
that one was a little steep, but all right. Then on this last lap, I'm just going to shave a little bit off like that. Okay. So now we're going to fold up our pieces. And we're going to assemble the, the side and the bottom of our box. We're going to leave the top unassembled for right now. So same thing with the score tape. This would be really cute for like um, if you bake cookies or if you bake fudge or something like that. I think that would be really cute to put a like a, like a, you could put like a row of, of cookies or something in there. Especially if it's like um, like classmate gifts or something, if you're baking gifts or making candies or something for a school, like, um, I don't know if people still do that. We used to do that a lot when we were in school. Even when my kids were little, um, you know, you'd send in holiday treats. You could send in a little goodie for every every kid. I don't know if they, they frown upon that now. There's so many uh, food allergies and stuff. The only reason they frowned upon it then, if they were gonna frown upon it, would just be the extra sugar in the kids, you know, <laughs> right before Christmas when they're all wound up anyway. But. And just like before, push your hand in the box, press against that tape really well. Okay, and then we can fold down the two side flaps. Now here's where it gets a little bit tricky. We need to make a tab on one side of the box and we need to make a slit on the other side of the box. So the first thing to do is to make the tab. And um, the easiest way that I found to make the tab is to lay the box. I'm just going to fold this back. Don't fold yours back. I'm just doing this so you can see it. You might crack the cardstock if you do that. So I'm going to fold that back and just kind of line it right up to my score pal. So the side of my of my box is up against this, the edge where the measurements and the the um, edge of the top flap is against the the side that we score against. And what I'm going to do is I am going to look at these kind of side measurements, and I am going to go about half an inch. And I'm going to score, let me do this side first, half an inch, this is so awkward. I'm going to pull that score line right up until about an inch and a half. And I'm going to do the same thing from an inch and a half to the other end. Okay, so what I have, I'm going to, I'm going to draw that. I'm just going to draw it so you can see where my score line is. Okay, whoops, a little bit longer than that. So it's about inch and one half on each side there. All right, so now what I'm going to do is I am going to cut just under the score line so I don't have a weird line on my thing. And then I'm going to just kind of cut up and do the same thing on this side when I cut down to the score line and then I'm just going to cut all the way to the end just slightly under the score line so I don't have that weird a weird score line so this is what it looks like looks almost like a looks like we've got a house with a with a chimney in the middle oh man my camera's having a hard time focusing sorry about that guys not enough contrast Okay, so then you're going to fold your box and on the opposite side, you're going to indicate where the tab's gonna land. So I would say probably like an eighth of an inch from the edge that you just cut, you wanna put a dot on either side of the tab. And this is gonna be a little bit bigger. So it's about, I would say an eighth of an inch from that side and an eighth of an inch away from the tab. Okay, so I don't know if you can see, those two dots are probably kind of light. We got a dot there, we got a dot there. Like put my tab there. Can you see? I've got my dot there, I've got my dot there. And now what I'm going to do is set this aside and I'm going to cut on between those two lines. Oops, I got the wrong end of my marker. Man, it's getting late. <laughs> Which really isn't. It's not late for me. It's only like 3 in the afternoon for me. 
Okay, again, this might be difficult for you to see. Oh, I'm going to turn it. Hopefully you can see that. I'm going to cut from dot to dot. Color the edges of the, uh, if you could see white on the edges. Okay, so to close of the box, all you're going to do is insert the tab into the box so if you've got some edges like i have here where you can see the white because our the paper is um uh because the paper has a white core just take a marker and just kind of touch it that was also a way to fix if your cardstock cracks real easy fix also because this is kind of a tone on tone paper we've got like a really dark teal on a we have a dark teal with an even extra dark teal on there, so it works if you just kind of go over with your marker, and you can get rid of any of those white white marks if they bother you, or you can see the edge of the paper. You could do it before you put it together if you're worried about like um, messing up, but honestly, it's pretty easy. And I think if it even if it messed up a little bit, I don't think it'd be really that noticeable. But see, we leave it we have this an eighth of an inch away from where actually where you can probably see this now um that's why we left a, a little bit of space so we didn't have those dots right up against where that paper was cut because it wouldn't give you enough room to tuck that tab and you need a little room so about an eighth of an inch from this edge here when you're overlapping you need a little space for that things to go in that tab and i'm going to hit the edges here because those those are bugging me too i totally get you and yeah probably no one would notice <laughs> except us, except the people who made it, and we would never judge anybody else. And yet, we judge ourselves. <laughs> I can show you my trick for getting really pretty bows too. We got a little time left. If you guys are interested. Okay. You can even probably have that tab out a little bit further even because if you have it out too far, it might not close tightly, but if you have it too close, it's going to be a pain to get closed. So there's our little tabbed box, perfect for little treats. That Actually, this would be really cute for handmade soap as well. It would, it would be a tighter fit. It would be really nice. And I think it would be strong enough too because it's not a really big box. All right, so bows. I really like the way this bow came out. This was done with grow grain ribbon, had a pretty glitter finish to it. Um, you could use any ribbon you want, but a, a grow grain ribbon has a good structure to it. So it usually will stay how you like it or how you uh, how you adhere it down. It's, it stays really well. So I have my husband make me a tool for this, but it's really easy and you could definitely make something similar. I put it back in my drawer though. I thought I left all my stuff I needed out, but. Hang on a second. Sorry about that, guys. I gotta go across my room and grab this. Cool, my husband made me. And anybody with some woodworking skills could make something similar. And if you don't have this, what you can do is take a couple clips, like strong clips, and clip them to the edge of a box, however far away from each other you want to make the bows that you want. So um, the nice thing about this is it's got a nice stable base, so it's not gonna move on me when I'm making my bow. So let's see about how far did I have those to make this bow? Probably probably had them this far apart and this was a double looped bow because you can't get two probably you might be able to get three loops on a bow this size the smaller the bow the fewer loops if your ribbon's wide if you have narrower ribbon you can get more loops so you've got to figure out how much space you've got so we'll do a double looped bow here and this is my grow grain ribbon that's got a pretty gl uh, glitter to it and what you're going to do is you need to wrap it around two full times so make sure you have two full wraps and then a little extra okay so that's two full wraps and then a little extra i'm actually gonna i'll snip this and i'll show you again okay then i'll just tell you how long this is this is about um 23 inches so I'm going to leave probably about four inches out 
and I'm going to wrap it around twice. Okay. So make sure you have two loops on each side. Then, so one of your ribbons, and the grain is a little stiff, so it can be a little tricky to work with. One of your ribbons is on the underside or on the inside of your bow, and one ribbon is on the outside of your bow. So you take the outside one, and you're going to wrap it around. You're going to take the inside one. Hold on a second, guys. <laughs> Hold on. I did this a different way. Okay, you've got your ribbon. It doesn't need to be quite that long. I'm sorry, guys. I completely had a brain cramp. Um, you just need it long enough to wrap around two full times. So I might have this one a little bit longer. Okay, so we got two full. We got two full wraps there. Then you need another piece of ribbon that's about six inches long. I've, I've been doing so many wreaths lately that I've got the wreath bow thing in my brain right now. Um, I can only keep one one bow. <laughs> In my brand at once apparently so it's wrapped twice along twice around and we got a little bit of excess to hang on to so we got about 20 inches of ribbon i'm probably going to do do it and these are probably about four inches apart so i have little pegs there i can actually line it up on my map about three i would say three and three quarter inches apart or so so we've got 22 inches of ribbon so you're going to hold that if you need to you could clip it with something and then you're going to take a another piece of ribbon and you're going to make sure it's nice and flat and pretty on the front Okay, I'm going to move that a little bit closer to the camera so you can see and make sure that my glitter's on the outside the front side of the ribbon's facing so the uh, the back side of the ribbon's on the inside of the bow the front side of the ribbon's on the outside of the bow and then you are going to tie this I'm just going to lay this down on its face here you're going to tie this in a knot really really strongly actually so it does help to have that extra bit of ribbon there when you were first wrapping so that you have something you can pull against you want to pull that sucker as hard as you can and make as tight of a knot as you can and if you can't do that with a ribbon do it with string first and then go over and do it with a ribbon and you want it to be in the middle of your bow okay so it looks like this then you want to tie it you want to do another knot if you've got somebody that can put their finger on that bow on that knot that's going to be helpful but a lot of times we don't so having a little kind of tool like this can really help Okay, you want to tighten up that knot as much as you can. Okay, then slide off your bow, and you're going to have these extra tails. Don't worry about that. You only want to keep two tails if they'll look decent. So this one looks good. Usually the one that you didn't tie are going to look good. Actually, I got one, one was from the knot that I made, and the other one is just the loose one. You want your two tails. So that's what we have so far. And then we can snip off the excess. Let's see how that looks. Maybe I'll take. Actually, I'm going to pull down the two strings. You're going to be more confused than you started with <laughs> making this bow. Okay, so the knot, here's the knot that I made in the back. I'm going to get rid of those ends. I pulled the two leftover strands from our bow down. That's going to make our tails. Okay. Pull, keep just just hang on to those uh, the, the part we tied around hang on to it now for like actually literally holding on to it then you're gonna separate your bows your loops you're gonna pull one loop up and pull one loop down so I've got my inner loop down and my outer loop up do the same thing on the other side so if you pulled your inner loop down on the left side pull the inner loop down on the right side or vice versa just make sure they match if you had a triple loop bow then you'd want to keep the top loop in the center and then um, your inner loop down and your middle loop up. Just make sure it's, they match, basically. Okay, now I'm going to trim the leftover ribbon on the back I don't need. So we can't poke out and you can't see it. I'm curious to see how that looks like if the inner one's up. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. You do it either way. And then to get to the ends, you want to line your two ends, the two ends up. And then if you want a notched end, fold them in half. And then cut up at an angle. And 
And then you have a pretty good looking bow. I'm going to set that on top of the white spool here so it shows up really well. And then when I glue that to a project, I'll actually glue down. I'll put a little glue underneath the tails and a little glue under each loop. A glue dot works really well or hot glue works really well. And then it will stay where you put it. And if, you're, uh, if you want to make sure the box can be reused, you could glue it to an area where you can slide off the bow that you have. So, um, so that's something to consider if you want the box to be able to be reused. You can also use a bow like this. You can glue it to a barrette really easily if you want to make a hair bow. Um, that would be really, really cute and very easy. So if you want to make something to match somebody's dress this Christmas, you can very easily pull out a bow like that. Um, I feel like that was probably a very, very... <laughs> <laughs> very elaborate way we can do it one more time we'll do it one more time guys um i'll do it one more time <laughs> okay so let's pull off about 22 inches of ribbon and then we'll pull off about six inches of ribbon so we have that piece to tie both that's one of those things both are one of those things it's almost like i gotta practice it right before i do it again so we're gonna wrap our ribbon around twice to make sure we have two loops and try to balance it so that our tails on the back are about the same length. Hope that's enough contrast. Let me put the um, put that spool underneath. Okay, so we wrapped around twice and we've got our inner tail and our outer tail are hanging over it just about the same on either side. And again, you can use, uh, take a couple like, um, you know, A clamps, A clips, or um, some sort of strong clip you can clip to the edge of a wooden box or something and do something like that if you don't have um, if you don't have a bowl maker like this, then take your short piece of ribbon. I'm going to lay it up against the right side of the bow, which could be either side, but it's going to be the side that, that doesn't have the loose, the loose um, ribbon. It's going to be on the side that's got the finished edges. And then you're just going to tie it tightly and use a piece of string. If you can't get your ribbon tied tight enough, Use a piece of string first and then you can just tie a piece of ribbon or glue a piece of ribbon around it after because it can be kind of tricky to tie grow green ribbon it's so thick and do a nice tight double knot i would probably glue if i was going to do a hair clip i would glue this to a um to one of those automatic like spring type clips and you slide it off your little tool here And then you're going to pull down that excess, the leftover ribbon. Try to twist it so that you can see the glitter on the front if you're using a, uh, a ribbon that's got, got a specific side. If you can kind of twist it and get it to get it to mold to your devices here. And then you're just going to pull the two loops apart. Just make sure if you, you know, put the outside one up, you do that the same on the other side. You can slide the middle of the ribbon around if you need to, if you don't have it lined up perfectly. Trim the excess from the knot on the back, but not too small. You don't want to trim it down to nothing or it might unravel on you. You've got to leave a little bit. Just like getting, you can't trim that ribbon, that yarn right down to nothing. And then you're going to hold your two ends together. Or what you could do, if you don't want to do that, if you want to do like an angled one, you could just do one and then kind of line it up. Do the other and do a bow like that. And then when you glue it to your project, you can put a little bit of glue under the loops and under the tails to hold it in place really well. And there you have it. Well, guys, thank you so much for crafting with me today. I had a great time. I hope you find these little projects useful. I will go in and edit the measurements on those um, those two boxes that I got wrong on my um, on my printout. So if you give me just like maybe 10 minutes before you go and try to download that, that would be great. Um, just so you don't get the wrong measurement and ruin any paper. Um, but uh, if anybody has any questions, I will, hello. <sighs> Uh, if anyone has any questions or anything, let me know right now. I will look at the chat. Uh, I just took my glasses on so off so I could look all, you know, fancy, and I can't read my screen. <laughs> oh, boy. Um, oh, spring tweezers are a great tool to hold the knot. That's a great tip. 
Um, oh, and if you guys want to catch up on any of the, the chat that you might have missed or if you're catching the replay, you can see that when you're watching this on Facebook. You can see while you're watching it, the chat go by as it happened, which is kind of handy because then you can kind of see what, what people might have asked. Um, oh, the leftover ribbon that you trimmed could be great to tie the bow onto a gift. Absolutely. Absolutely. Especially if it was on a gift bag and you had that leftover bit of ribbon, you could tie that, use it to tie it on the... On the um, like on the ribbon on ribbon handle on a gift bag or something. That's a great tip. Absolutely. Why waste it, right? Oh, thank you guys so much for joining. I'm just going to scroll back a little bit and make sure I didn't miss anybody. The, my husband actually made the bow makers. We sold them for a while. Um, they're so handy. We don't anymore, but um, but just like, you know, I would recommend that you buy dowels first and then you make sure you know what size they are. Then you drill the holes just to make sure they match. But uh, you really only need two. Um, sometimes, though, if I'm making a lot of bows, bows I'll put, and I have a, my ribbon is small enough, I'll use one of these to put my ribbon spool on so I don't lose it. So I'll have the spool on one peg and then I'll just keep making ribbon and ribbon and ribbon, you know, just keep doing over and over and over again. It's amazing how you forget how to make a bow and then you have to like remind yourself again when you're doing a project. <laughs> yes, Simone, I have a lot of blonde moments too. Even when I dye my hair red, I'll have blonde moments. It's, <laughs> it's very strange. And I'm just kidding there. I know that hair color has nothing to do with anyone's intelligence. I, I'm making fun of myself. <laughs> All right, geez, I'm scrolling back. I don't think I missed anybody, but if I did, you can pop another um, uh, another question in there. All right, hopefully I'm all caught up. Thanks everybody for joining today. It was a lot of fun. It was a nice way to break up the week and break up the day and uh, get some stuff done before before Christmas rolls around. Um, well, thanks again. Please give me a thumb. Yeah, please like this. Like this before you go. That'll help other people find it. And um, if you're joining us later, I hope you enjoyed the replay and we will see you next time. Uh, bye.